Good morning. Sorry for the delay. I will pause and refresh everything so that I can catch you. Facebook is acting up this morning and I could not get my video to go in the right direction. So you're not going to see me. Good morning. <laughs> because I don't know, I can't get it to flip properly. You know, these challenges. Let me just move my stool, get myself organized. This is, you know, the 10 minute panic that I've been in for the last few minutes. So as you hop on, say good morning. Let me know that you're there. Hopefully I haven't missed everybody and you've all gone off to start your day. The video will be very condensed. So I will try to stay within the uh, camera frame that I have today which is very small. So if you don't see something, holler and I will adjust, okay? Good morning, Glenda, perfect, you can see me. And then I think Yvonne is there as well. I'm trying to see comments and of course that's acting up too. Oh my goodness, you guys, it's gonna be a day. Good thing I got a strong Baileys and tea beside me. Hey, cheers to all of you. Thank you for joining me. So if you have an idea of maybe what we're playing with today, Put it in the comments because you know it's just around the corner and we have to get ready and I have to help you do that right so I'm going to inspire you oh good you are there hi Yvonne I was kind of looking at my screen but my um, holder kind of blocks my phone so <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge it's a challenging morning friends but thank you for joining me I appreciate it all right any guesses of what we're going to play with today Maybe we'll see how I can trying to watch the screen and the comments. Oh my goodness! Yes, Rhonda, I was a bit late. Sorry, I I was posting, trying to fix it. You know, all the fun things. So we're gonna play with the Easter Bunny today. Adulting is hard, I'm telling you, right? Yes, good guess, Glenda. You got it. So this is a little sign that I've made for my table. So this week I will share with you some tablescape ideas. Um, with some different ideas as well using the set other than the few that I'm going to show you this week or today sorry um but this is a cute little set it is going to carry over into the new catalog so that is our big news this week that um the new catalog is coming out we've had a chance to look at it as demonstrators so uh lots of fun things to come and uh, I'm excited to share all that with you. We will put in a pre-order and then you will get to see all the goodness that is coming and make your wish lists up for May the 4th when it goes live for you as customers. If you're thinking that you need to have it all and um, you wanna become a demonstrator, we can chat about that. We're not gonna use this to chat about that and in length or anything like that. So I've pulled out a few of the ones that I've made in the past that of course don't use this set but could easily be adapted to this set. So if you were in the Playing in the Rain retreat with Glenda and I, um, we made this cute little box that can hold lifesavers, can hold Lindor chocolates, the little round balls. Um, it can hold um, a little hand cream from Bath and Body Works, um, many, many options. It is a good sized little box and could easily be adapted with some designer paper that you need to use up and then putting one of these little bunnies in, um, making your own designer paper if you don't um, collect it and hoard it like the rest of us, um, which kudos to you because my goodness, do I have a lot of it. Um, but that's a cute little box that you can use. I made these last year with the Easter set that we had. They're just a little gum eggy curtain. They're kind of cute. And I like to make funny little, um, gaggy kind of treat packaging so this is chicken poop because obviously it's little eggs um, but you could easily adapt that to like the little bird that's in there and just you know have it cute and then that is a die cut out of one of the sets I believe it's retired now I don't know it, I got so many retiring and all that fun stuff going on in my brain that I can't even keep track of what's coming what's going and what's current <laughs> anyone else having that problem you can hold jewelry too. Oh yeah, of course. You make a nice little box for your hubby and tell him to go fill it up, right? Good good idea, Glenda. I like that idea. Good morning, Lynn. I haven't seen you in a long time. Welcome. Um, and then we made, if you happen to hoard these little jam jars that we had with our peach bundle, 
um, like I did. I have a drawer full of them. Um, if you need any, contact me. I'll help you out. <laughs> um, this is a cute little one, too, where we made a little holder to go in. And this also could be adapted to our new set um, with the bunnies and the eggs instead of the chick. And then whatever designer paper you need to use up so you can get some new stuff. And then we also made this little chick with a Lindor egg um, holder. And it was very, very simple. He kind of just sits in that little holder. I can give you the tutorial if you want um, to make these little things. But these were my little treat place cards um, last year um, for all of our guests that we had for Easter. And uh, they're super cute. But also, could it doesn't need to be, uh, it's just using up your designer paper, which, of course, I've been encouraging you to do so you can get new stuff. Um, but uses the little chick chocolate because, you know, there's always cute little chocolatey goodiness out right now in the stores. So and then there's this cute little one that I found in my stash that um, Glenda actually sent me. These little lollipops. I actually have seen these little frogs still at um, the local dollar store. So making the little diaper fold, putting a little hole in the bottom and then it can be just a little holder. And you can, you of course, use Easter paper or some florals or something. And that would be a cute little placeholder. You could put their name on the front or initial with our lovely new um, alpha best or no, what are they called? Oh, Alamode dies. You can use that. So I will show you a couple cards and then we'll make a little project. And then um, you will have some inspiration. So this is a cute little card that um, Kim Fee did. So it was kind of inspired by hers. And it's using that new set um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of names right now. Irresistible Blooms from the online exclusive um, using that great um, dot, the dot die that's in it, I call it. Um, and then, of course, the paper in the background. And then just um, using your blends to color in the bunny. And that garland, you know, you can make a wreath with that whole garland. I mean, it's a lot of fussy cutting because there's no dies with this other than the punch for the bunny but um, you can make a whole garland of it. And then it looks cute around um, like a little Hawaiian lay around his neck. Um, and I also have a sample where it's in his hair. So um, super cute, super easy. You know, you can mass produce these, no problem. You'd forgotten about that frog? Yeah, I know, right? So did I, I, I just throw things in a drawer for extra inspiration and I forget about them. This is a cute little one that I made before the carrot thanks a bunch set retired but um, also using um, the eggs and the flowers and then just the little he's sitting on the little carrots kind of a little bit similar play off of this one um, but then using the carrots to make a background as well and then I've mixed up my embellishments. Good morning Valerie you're awake yay! <laughs> um, thanks Yvonne! Um, so I've mixed them up with the sequins and then the in color dots um, that are going out with the new with the uh, in colors that are retiring. So the soft succulent, I'm so sad. And then this is mitt macaron in the back that is retiring as well. And this one actually is blushing bride, which I just realized um, will be gone as well. So cute little cards, simple, easy to make. Just some layers. Some I have these little bowls. I don't know if anybody else has these. I have these little bowls that when I'm creating. All my little extra bits and parts go in there. So I usually pick from these before I start creating and see what I've got in there. And I have like eight holes, you guys, full of little goodies. So good morning, Carla. So um, it's it helps me to use up all the little bits before I actually um, get started cutting and making something else. All right. So. Let's get into a couple of the little projects that I want to show you. So this little one I thought was cute because this die is retiring. Now this is the pocket. Um, oh, names are hard today, you guys. Uh, mini pocket envelope. It is going to retire, but it's super cute. If you haven't gotten it, it may be something that you consider. Um, it's a good size little pocket. You can put a gift card in there and you can tuck it inside a card. Um, just keeps everything contained. Or it holds one of these Ghirardelli chocolate um, squares. Super easy. So I thought these were going to be my little place settings this year for whoever comes to Easter dinner. And you'll see here where I've used his the flowers into his little hair there. And I've used up a few retiring products that brushed... Um, Brush Strokes Paper, took me a second to think of the name, 
and um, this lovely rose gold ribbon. You could also use the blue and then of course take the flowers off for a masculine type little setting. And then I just had a little tag with the handwritten um, name on it or you can um, use the Alamo dies and just do an initial with um, one of the die cuts for the letters. But it's got some cute elements. It's got a little bow, it's got some tags, it's got where you can actually punch at the top and, and reinforce and you can hang these too. So if you have like a, a tree that you keep up all year round and just decorate for the di different seasons, you can hang those off of there. Um, it, and it's got um, also a little tag thing there. This is a very, very cute little die. And then it's got just some accents of the, the greenery. Um, I like the little, the smaller sentiment dies. Well, so it does have some use after the, it ex retires. And I think it would be very useful to you. Um, to have, obviously, we always like to tuck in those gift cards and sort of hide them when we're gifting them to people. So that it's kind of like an extra surprise inside a card, right? So this is a cute little treat. I'll just put it there because I think you can see it there. Oh, my goodness, you've had a busy morning, Valerie, doing laundry, cleaning the oven. Oh, I know I'm racing around like a chicken with my head cut off. Um, and then I wanted to show you these cute little bags that you can pretty much get everywhere, to be honest. Um, I just use my stays on and I'll just do it live with you right now and show you how easy it is. Um, just the bunny stamp and your stays on. She just got all over my hand. Um, if they're kind of wrinkly, you may want to iron them before you actually stamp this on there just so you get a smooth surface. Sometimes the bigger ones are kind of folded in the packaging and they have lines on them. So you just want to hold it there for a few minutes. Stays on, takes a second to grab onto that fabric. And so you want to make sure they get a good image. And if you are using your Stamparatus, which I recommend getting if you do not have one because they are going away, you'll be able to get a little bit of a darker image. I probably could have stamped that a bit more or my pad might need to be um, re-inked. But you'll see how cute that gives a little background. And then you can stamp the little carrots even in the background as well. And then if you wanted to color him in, obviously, I'm not sure. I've never tried the blends on fabric. But I would just recommend using like a craft paint, sort of watered down. You can kind of get a watercolor look, slip a bit of paper in there, and that'll keep it from, of course, running through onto the other side. And you'll have a cute little bag that you can stick some treats in and obviously have at the place setting. Add a little tag from the dies, even from these ones. And you can hang that off there and then have an initial or a name as well. So quick, easy ones that you can make um, in a hurry and have them ready for the dinner table in case you have some surprise guests, right? Does anybody else get some of those? I get them all the time. Put a thumbs up or a heart. Yeah, you have surprise guests all the time. All right, just making sure I'm in the screen and you guys are good. You haven't hollered at me that you can't see anything. So, all right. So the ones we are going to kind of adapt today are some extra ideas that I've done in the past. Um, Tic Tacs kind of look like bunny tails, obviously not in this orange container, but when you take them out. So I call them bunny tails and I've just made a little tag on my computer and I've glued a little pom pom to the back to kind of make it look like it's a bunny tail. And for sake of time, these did have um, the ones that I made last year had a little bit of paper wrapping around. Um, like a belly band around the container and then this sat on top. But for sake of time, I just grabbed one that I had already. And I um, got it ready to go on camera. So we're going to quickly color our bunny just with some gray granite. And I'm not going to get too crazy here. I'm just going to give him a quick color. But I am going to show you a couple techniques to kind of um, give your bunny a little bit of dimension. So bear with me for two seconds while I color this. I probably could have done it beforehand, but, you know, I was having video problems. So I was solving that first. And then you'll notice that as I color this, we'll chitty chat here. Um, you'll notice that I've scheduled out all of the Baileys and Tea until the end of September, I believe, is when I did it too. Might have been the beginning of September. Um, I am switching 
jobs this weekend. <laughs> I'm going back to a building that I used to have before, which is six days a week. Um, so it's every night I'm going to work for a few hours. Um, so obviously that's going to impact my time a bit. And so I'm going to, for the summer, and I'm going to start it a bit early. I don't normally start it in April, but um, I'm going to go every second week from now on just to give me a bit of time in between to create and all that fun stuff. There could be some pop-up surprise lives, which I will warn you about, but um, those are the ones that I've pre-scheduled out to make my life a little bit easier. Okay, I'm going to quickly color another one too, so I can show you two demonstrations here. Um, so just note of that, and a good way to get notified when I am going live is to click that you're going to the event and it will it should I would I won't say that it will my crumb cake is getting to the end of its life um, it should remind you I won't promise that it will um, I have problems all the time without getting notifications so noted in your calendar on your phone or somewhere that um, it will tell you And then you'll be able to join me. As always, there's always replays afterwards. Mondays, I upload the YouTube video for you to have easy access. So don't forget, I have a YouTube channel. You can put yourself on notifications over there. It will just notify you when I load a new video, which would always be the Baileys and Tea. But I got grand plans coming down the line, friends. So bear with me as I do some changes. And always check in and see what's going on. And I will keep you informed to the best of my abilities as I transition work here. All right. So a couple hints and tricks to this is if you happen to get one of the chalk markers before they retired, um, you will have some options to use that or... Um, I think they're jelly roll, roll pens, I think they call them. Um, those ones are great to do this as well, but I love this chalk marker. I wish they'd never retired it. So you can see, you can get some extra dimension there as soon as my camera kind of kicks in. There we go. Um, you'll get some extra dimension there with him, but you can also create this look with your blender pen. And I always suggest rub it off before you start using it to make sure there's no pooled alcohol in the bottom. And you can use your bullet tip to kind of dot it, either large or small, depending on what you want. And it'll just take a second for it to react with the um, base layer. And then you'll see you kind of have some speckling dots there too. So you'll see the difference between the chalk at the top. And it kind of looks very, very similar when you do it um, on the bottom with the blender pen. So you kind of get the same options. And then of course you can come in and you can do with your darker color, you can do sort of spotting on his back. And if you did it in the same color, which I'll do right now. So this was a trick that I learned on this card where Kim came in and did the different colors. So what she did was took the, the base one there and then just came back over and blended them. I might not have done it as quickly as I should have. And then it kind of blends out the dots. Give it a second to react, but you'll see where it kind of came in. So I'll hold this up close and on screen. You'll see kind of where you get that shading. And then she also took her blender pen over top of it and sort of lightened out the, like the middle of his body and sort of around. So this is a good trick. I don't play with my blends enough to um, and sorry, I've got one stamp on the back. I cut off his ear, so you're kind of seeing a black line come through. But that's how she kind of got that look, is that she took the blender pen and kind of just lightened out certain areas. And then took that darker in and did that as well. Oops, sorry, I'm not on screen. Isn't that cute? So there's some tips on how to color. And then she left, of course, negative white space there too to make it look super cute. 
She's a fantastic color. So those are some tips to kind of make your bunny look a little more lifelike. And then on this one, I just, I don't know, I went on on a whim. So this is colored in crumb cake on the bottom. And then I took my blender pen and went right over top of it, or the color lifter, sorry. Yes, thank you, Glenda. Brain, out to lunch. Um, and then I took the um, gray granite and sort of went into the middle and then obviously went over it with the blender pen again or the color lifter, sorry. And um, it lightened it up a little bit. So it kind of gives them like sort of a two-tone look, which is kind of cute. So we'll take one of these bunnies and we'll cut them out. And then I've got another treat packaging and a card for you. Are these not cute little ideas you guys give me a heart or thumbs up that you like it do you think you'll create one of these do you like to put out little treats at your table or is that something you totally skip right over oh look at all the love you guys are so sweet um let's just grab a piece of scrap paper that i have handy here kind of sort of I really do. I have scraps everywhere. So you can just sort of wrap that around. I would cut it down just a smidge to, um, it would sort of cut or cover over, over your, your label, or you could cover the whole front of it, whatever you like. So we'll just go like this. Obviously on the back, I would cut it off so that my little bum tail there is still there. And I would cut it straight. So we'll grab our seal. Probably won't start on this little packaging. So super easy, super cute. Something that you can get readily available anywhere. Tic Tacs, you know, are quite popular right at the cash till. So as you're standing there getting your Easter groceries, you will think of me as you look at a box of Tic Tacs, right? <laughs> I know you won't but you know I have hope that you'll think of me in the shopping adventures <laughs> so we'll just quickly put that on there you could put a little egg or a little carrot in his hand and how super cute is this or you can stick that sort of right there as well so that um, you can lay that on your place setting or you can stand it up sort of by your glassware whichever you want to do we'll stick that one there all right, so let's get to the other one. So these little boxes used to be um, stamping ups and we don't carry them anymore, but if you stocked up like me, um, or you can get them online, um, they're super cute. Um, this one's been damaged a little bit, but because it's been in storage for years, because I make these pretty much every year for um, a couple customers, they like them to put them out. It's kind of their tradition to have at their table. so. I play along and make them for them. So they're kind of cute. They're just little random carrot chocolates that I picked up at your local discount store. And I'm just gonna quickly cut out this bunny. I'm not gonna color it because you guys all know how to color and I've showed you all the coloring tips that you need. And I'll kind of look at the comments as I cut this sort of I got to get them on screen here yeah you like that tip uh Glenda and Yvonne yeah kind of cute to give him a bit of dimension otherwise he looks kind of flat and nobody wants flat looking um animals right you want them to have some dimension so uh this would be colored and looking cute and got some dimension on it and all that fun stuff and these I just print on my computer so I can mass produce them but this is just a cute little box it could also go in the little bag that you stamped the bunny on and it could be bunny bait as well with the little carrots inside so super cute and easy quick um, make for even kids for um, school treats to take in with these little bags because you can get them in like hundreds and 25s and 50s so easy to produce um, some little bunny bait for your friends or the office and then one more I've got for you, and then I've got a card, and then we'll wrap things up and I'll take off to work. Um, this is a cute little packaging. This is using our um, clear envelopes. 
um, which will be going up a little bit in price. So stock up now. Um, and then using these little Kinder chocolates that I found, some little raffia, and then, um, you know, the Eros lip balm, which I love. I kind of coordinated it with the same color of my packaging. And then I've just made a bow from that same pocket envelope die set. Um, and then just cut some strips out of some scrap that I have. I'm trying to use up my DSP. Uh, the doilies are retired. They're from the home doilies collection, I think. I can't remember what it's called. Um, they retired a while ago, but I have a whole bunch. And then I just cut a square out of the color and contours dies, folded it in half, and then just kind of stapled it on the back to hold it. But that's a quick and easy little treat just to have out, even for the kids. And... Um, or your workmates, whatever, you know, as we transition from summer to sp or from spring, winter sort of transition here, everyone's getting dry lips. So this is always a nice little gift to give to people. I know I love these and collect them and get them every year for Christmas. So I have hundreds of them, I swear, because everybody gets them for me. And then another cute little card uh, using our in colors and the sentimental park suite. Um, super cute. I just did a little bit of a blender pen and watercolor pencil look on him and I'm um, just stamped out and cut it. I haven't put a greeting on it yet because I haven't got that far. Um, but super easy, cute card to use up your designer paper, right? Is that not adorable? Did you get some cute ideas? Well, your boss would like the, the bunny bait. <laughs> well, maybe I'll have to send your boss one. <laughs> aren't they cute I love them I love the bunny the bunny is so cute I love all the cute animals but these ones are super cute so pocket envelope dies you may want on your wish list before they retire I like the way I colored the bunny good I'm glad I gave you an idea and a tip for coloring and then if you're interested I do have an upcoming class when am I have changed the date so let me look at my calendar here um, it's on the 16th, so it's after Easter, but I'm prepping kits right now. It's using the Beautifully Happy... Oh, no, sorry, it's on the 23rd. I'm thinking the wrong class. It's on the 23rd of April, uh, using the Beautifully Happy set. So if you got that in celebration, I've got some lovely cards that we are going to make in a kit. So you can contact me and uh, join in on the class if you want. It's all on Zoom, so it's easy to participate. Or you can watch the video after and uh, make the cards um, at your own pace, whatever you like, but I can send you a kit so you can contact me and uh, we'll arrange that. Uh, any questions? Can't see the cards. Oh, sorry. Well, it's kind of like a sneak peek, Glenda. No, <laughs> I think you've seen them. I posted them. They are on my events as well as upcoming classes. I have a couple coming. There you go. You've already done something with this as well, I think. So there we go. I know they're kind of off screen, sorry. There's up close and personal for you. So if you want to participate in that, I'll be prepping sort of Easter weekend. So if you can let me know before that and uh, I'll get you in if you want to participate. And um, I think that's all I have for you, friends. Sorry for the video change this week. Um, hopefully I'll get it working. If not, I will switch programs completely for next one. So next Baileys and Tea will be on the 15th of April. I hope everyone has a wonderful Easter. Make some treats and get your tablescape going. Tune in this week on my page for extra ideas on how to style your table and, um, you know, get things all ready. And uh, you'll be ready for Easter dinner and looking like a pro, a paper crafting pro. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. So nice to see you all. And I will um, catch you soon. Okay. Paper hugs. Bye-bye.